stay here last night in his gym. It's like I don't fit in. It's like I don't belong here. Let's go talk to a couple of guys that never gamble. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. See, Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the fall house at the same time. He didn't think we could do it. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slice. And now, here's Buddy. Let that open. Now, Brendan Martin, he's a genius, isn't he? I had no idea Buddy was a Weezer fan, JJ. He is. Oh, yeah. I got all their albums. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, along with my, right, right, right next to Eminem and all the rap artists I got there. You probably do got Marshall Mathers somewhere in your <laughs> selection. You probably do. Yeah. Uh, by the oh, way, I, I have rather eclectic taste in music. Don't don't get fooled. Okay. No, no, I know you're a big bluegrass mm-hmm. guy. No, different. I like classical, whatever. But that's not about the program's not about music. It's about sports. What a weekend for couch potatoes like JJ and me. Not so much Tom. He had to mess things up by going to work as a bartender and going to a play. Or it's I'm a, a musical, worried, by the way. Yeah, people that about, live life on the weekends uh, bother me. It's a, a musical, little, by the way. Uh, I'm a little worried about Tom. The game of the year. The century of the decade, and Tom goes to do what? <laughs> Lay see Les Mis. I don't Let know. Let play hold it. where they sing the whole time. JJ, hold it. Right now, look up man card and see if he <laughs> No, I told JJ that Saturday I had to give up my man card. Man card. He's definitely. I don't know. Let's take a vote here. Austin, you can participate. Raise your hand if Tom's man card should be pulled for going to see Les Mis and not watching Alabama, Texas a Raise your hand. <laughs> I watched the I'm not going to say Raise that because... Oh, wait a minute. Beca- no. This is why. No. Because I'm going to give Tom some credit because it's not like it is a big Gator game or something. It oh, doesn't involve... There, there'd no, have been no, it's only the been greatest no, college game played in the last 10 years. Yeah, oh, 10 if it, years. Look here. If it had been, been Florida... <laughs> not if involving it, Miami. If it had been Florida, Toledo... Lay Miz is out. Oh. See, even okay. for that, I don't believe that. I believe he's lying about that. But no, I no. think if it's like Florida State, Florida. No, open first game. Dates. First open game dates, of Open dates are good times to do things. Which is what I did. Right. It was an open but date for Florida. Tom, call DVR, okay? No, DVR. I know. Digital video recorder. Yeah, okay. Believe me. Yeah. The game was on there. All right. Here we go. Uh, we'll have a little discourse about that later on. But I'm going to say one thing. Welcome back. Johnny Football. Of course. Oh, buddy. Yep. You know how much yep. that means to him? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> You're College <laughs> version. College version, you know. Not not the Johnny Unitas, but Johnny Football. The way he played, he deserves it. Fantastic performance by him. Yes, he threw it up for grabs a few times. But the one play he made, which was about 90% luck. But he's a playmaker. And he brings excitement to the field. And I know already they're starting to bash him as not being a good prospect. We'll get to that in a minute. I hate that. But let's 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 look. It's like bashing a guy in high school and saying he'll never be a college exactly. player. Come on, man. That although, 95. Although Tom, by the way, does for the people bash, who don't, Tom does bash a few high school. For players. the people that, who don't know, by the way, Buddy refused to call him Johnny Football earlier this summer. I did. That guy, that 95 yard touchdown pass, right there on his goal line with Alabama oh, breathing gosh, down his neck remarkable. was money. That receiver's not bad either, by the way. Yeah, you're right. That way, I mean, he really lit it up. I mean, he impressed me. And, you know, more importantly, he brought excitement to the game. I mean, A.J. McCarron did played well. He deserves it. I'm going to put them both right now in my top five on the, my high spin list for sure. I don't know who else I'll put in there yet because a couple of guys cooled off. Uh, Taj Boyd didn't play. Uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater didn't play as well. They struggled a little bit. But, you know, nobody's going to go 12 for 12. There are going to be some problems. Quarterbacks don't play every game great. Anyway, that's my thought. So but, better than 101? Because you put him at 100 to 1 about four weeks ago to win the Heisman. I put him at 50 to 1. Only 50 to 1. Yeah, because he's not going to win. He, he'll be in the top he's five. Winning. Yeah, I mean, he had his moment, and that's it. And, you know, he'll have great stats, but probably depending on what kind of season those other guys have now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could win it by default. That's not likely to happen. Tosh Boyd has to be Florida State. Louisville has to go yeah. undefeated. That's all, yeah, we got plenty uh, of things. And Bama Johnny, has to go If Johnny undefeated. Manziel, he's thrown 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, yeah. almost 1,000 yards. He's rushed for over 200 yards. Yeah. If he keeps putting numbers up like that every three games, yeah. he then he's, to, it, nobody's going to win it by default. He's he going to win it outright. He'd be in contention. But you know what I like about uh, Johnny Manziel's performance on uh, Saturday was that he wasn't flaunting and all up in the face like he was against Rice. He he had like a focused 
mentality and focus demeanor about him Good that point. made me feel like he respected Alabama and the game itself. Great point. And I think the other thing about it is that I really liked about him, he plays with so much joy. Yeah. He, he has really fun. loves playing the game. And I love that. Everybody about loves watching people that are having fun. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why NBA regular season really sucks sometimes. Because you people, can tell they're not having Jay, fun. People come by here. Why are they stopping and look at us? Because we're having a good time. No, oh, because we're idiots. That's well, why. But other than that. Okay. That's the good side. Here's the bad side. Oh, my gosh. I'm coming down. I'm going to sound like Tom Schmitz. The referees mm. in Tempe hosed Wisconsin. Terribly, one of the worst call I have ever seen in my life in a football game. 15 seconds left. Badger ball on the Arizona State 15. Time clicking off. Wildcat defender falls on the ball because he thinks because Wisconsin has downed the ball. <laughs> and the guy thinks it's a loose ball and falls on it. And what does the official do? Nothing. Nothing. The clock runs out without getting off a play. They stole that game from Wisconsin. Now, look. You still got to kick the field goal, but that is just horrible. But, but hold on, if you look at, if you watch the game and you watch the replay of it, the Wisconsin team don't seem to be in a whole lot of hurry to get up to no, the ball. Either. Yeah, they did. I watched the replay three times. They did try. They tried to get up, maybe not as fast as they could have, and with a fifteen to go. But they were trying to get a playoff. The referee held the ball till five seconds. Well, the referee told her to wait with three seconds to go. Yeah, that's but, great. But that, but but from fifteen seconds to about. Six or seven seconds, Wisconsin wasn't moving with any alacrity either. What happened well, for the 12 seconds? This is what happened. They were moving to set him up as a field goal at a certain spot in the field. So he goes to take a knee at a certain hash mark. He gets clipped by one of his linemen, so it looks real awkward and weird. But he does fall down. The Sun Devils think it's a fumble. Let's waste some more time. So one of them jumps on the ball. And he lays stays on, on the lays ball. On Seven the ball. And that's at least Clearly. a five-yard penalty for delay again. How many times do you think Tom Spitz has fallen on the guy and held him down? Probably 20 times, times in his life. Oh, it's, it's something yeah. you're supposed All to do. It's, it's what you're coached to do. Yeah. So you know it's obvious. And, you know, I, I, I'd say, well, ordinarily, what's a tough call for an official? No, it's not a tough call. <laughs> yeah. It's clearly – it's clear you've got to stop the clock, reset it. They're holding – they're over the ball. They're, they're, I feel like there's no precedent for this, though. <laughs> you don't see that called a lot. So I'm going to tell you what, you see a call from now on, you, yes. this will not happen again because this is abominable with these kids. I mean, Yeah, but what's that do for Wisconsin? That didn't nothing. do anything. They still lost the game. Exactly. And the uh, officials back. have been reprimanded Horrible. by the Pac-12. It's kind of like it, it, the, you said it's the worst call. You ever, I mean – it's no, it's no out. It's no uh, safe call. It's in the, not a twelfth man. It's, it's not no one safe call things. in the Kansas Kansas City St. Louis game. Yeah, it's no safe call in a perfect game for a Detroit Tiger pitcher that was clearly an out. I said football, but it's it's you know. I said it's one of the worst it's, it's calls no, I've seen in a college football game. It's, it's no fifth down in a Missouri game. No, yeah, Colorado. Yeah. That was a terrible. That was a terrible Colorado call. Colorado involved in that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, it's a, it, but it's, 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 it wasn't a case of missing a call. They just got it wrong, apparently. So, uh, you know, and yeah, something just didn't do anything when they right, should right. have. Right, right. Well, but something's happened to that crew. We'll tell you about that. And Tom wants to talk about a new but kind of weird rule. It's a stupid rule. It's a rule it that I really wasn't aware of until I heard about it as well. So we'll take a break. We'll come back. Also, tell you about Mac Brown. Josh Lasava, where are you, buddy? Over my zone next, by the way. You're my zone coming up at 5.30, so stay tuned for that. After this timeout on The Voice Book Out. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Having the motivation and making the commitment to quit smoking is a great first step towards becoming smoke-free. However, anyone who's tried to quit smoking knows how challenging it can be. Having the determination to quit may not be enough. You may need some help. If you're ready to quit smoking and are between the ages of 18 and 75, currently smoke 10 or more cigarettes a day, and can commit to participating for 24 weeks, you may be interested in a research study which is being conducted to evaluate the use of investigational drugs to see if they can aid individuals in their quest to quit smoking. To help you quit, smoking cessation counseling and all study Related medical care will be provided at no extra cost. You may also be reimbursed for your travel time. To receive more information about this study, how you can participate, please call Renstar Medical Research in Ocala at 352-629-5800. That's Renstar Medical Research in Ocala, 352-629-5800. 
Since 1976, Daniel L. Hightower, a lawyer, has been fighting for accident victim justice in North Central Florida and statewide. He believes everyone in America should follow the rules, including the insurance companies. He and his firm have experience fighting for victims of personal injury, wrongful death, workers' compensation, and Social Security disability, as well as serving those in need of help with bankruptcy, simple wills, and estate plans. The mission at the law offices of Daniel L. Hightower, PA, is to represent deserving clients and recover the maximum benefits they are entitled to by law in a timely manner. In personal injury and workers' compensation cases, there are no fees or costs unless a recovery is made. The law office of Daniel L. Hightower is located at 7 East Silver Springs Boulevard, Suite 300. For your free consultation, call 352-629-7777 or 1-888-LAW-1976 and visit danhightower.com for more information. Daniel L. Hightower, PA lawyer, fighting for accident victim justice and the proud sponsor of Ask the Cops. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports, from NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Robin, the Marion County Literacy Council has once again nominated us to be candidates in the Kiss a Horse for Literacy campaign. Two years ago, we sold paintings and won. Last year, we tried to sell more paintings and lost to legendary boxer Dave Schlenker. (laughs) I think he was wrestling. Wrestling, boxing, what's the difference, Robin? Well, the difference is that this year, we're busking. Busking for a bus. Translated, that means we'll be street performing for a kiss. A kiss with a horse. So be sure to keep your radio tuned to WOCA The Source as we announce the different locations where you can catch us playing our accordion and mandolin on the streets. All to help the Marion County Literacy Council teaching adults to learn how to read. We made a website just for our campaign. It's buskforabus.com. That's bus, B-U-S-K, then the number four, then the letter A, and then bus with two S's. Promotional consideration for the Marion County Literacy Council provided by your friends here at WOCA The Source. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM. Look who just walked in the room, Joel Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joel, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joel, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Swear at Florida. It'll be partly sunny today with a shower with thunderstorm around high 88 to 92. Partly cloudy tonight, low 71 and then 78 at the coast. Partly sunny tomorrow and becoming breezy with a shower or thunderstorm around in the afternoon, the high 86 to 90. And for Wednesday, clouds and sun with a shower or thunderstorm around during the late morning and afternoon hours, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Sports page talking about that horrible call by the officials in Tempe between the uh, Badger of, of Wisconsin and Wildcats of Arizona. Uh, Sun Devils, uh, Arizona. Sun Devils, I'm sorry. Sun Devils, uh, Arizona State, or Arizona's the Wildcats. Um, yeah, that was bad enough. I mean, but you wonder how where they get these guys from sometime. And this apparently, I guess, was a Big 12. Uh, was it a big it was a big 12, pack crew? Big 12 crew? Pack 12 crew. We, didn't, we screwed that one up. Yeah. I screwed that one up. Pac-12 crew, and some people are wondering whether or not, you know, there was a homer call. I don't know about that. I couldn't tell you. But I know this. There has been some kind of action taken, J.J., after those officials because yes. they agree with us it was a horrible call. Yeah, they have been, quote, reprimanded by the Pac-12 commissioner today, but they don't exactly say what happened to them, which makes you think maybe they got fined, suspended, Something of that nature. And at a news conference Monday, Gary Anderson, coach of Wisconsin, was asked whether he thought the Pac-12 statement was enough. He said, quote, to me personally, no. <laughs> Not hmm. a surprise at all. I, I, wouldn't, I hope these yeah. guys get suspended. Yeah, they got to get more than that, don't they? 
All right, you got any more headlines over there? Yeah, Lunch we got Rome? some. Uh, right. The shooting today, we were talking about most of the show, yeah. caused the Braves national games uh, to have a doubleheader tomorrow. Zach Johnson, after a uh, soggy Sunday for the BMW Championships, so they had to play today, Zach Johnson ended up winning. 16 over. Furyk, who had that 59 on Friday, three shots back, 13 under. And Tiger, I believe, finished nine under. Something like that, pretty far down. So he got what he wanted to out of it, Tom. So. Yeah, he did. He got what he wanted. He's still, you know, I, I think he's still leading the FedEx Cup points. He takes back over the lead. So he got what he wanted, Nate. Yeah, he took back over. You got 30 players now, going to play four rounds. That's cool. I like that. Nobody gets cut next week. Everybody plays Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And somebody's going to win $12 million from the FedEx Cup plus the uh, – one point two million that goes to the winner of the tour championship. Somebody's gonna make if you win the tour championship next week, if you're in the top five by winning the tour championship, you'll also win the uh FedEx Cup and you can take home a little over thirteen million dollars for your effort next awesome. next week. Uh today at three sixteen. Very famous number for Tim Tebow. Jaguars fans met outside Everbank Field for a sign free agent quarterback Tim Tebow rally. I don't know how that went. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. And some fighting within the Nebraska. By the way, as corny as it sounds, it makes still makes sense. Yeah, it does. They they stink. They lost again yesterday. They've scored eleven points in two games, I believe. Yeah, one bad. of them was a safety, right? Right. So they didn't even really score it. And Nebraska, who dropped out of the top twenty-five yesterday mm-hmm. after they're just getting destroyed, forty-one unanswered points uh, to UCLA or some thirty-eight unanswered, something like that at home. When they were wearing the black shirts. Black shirts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nebraska, former Nebraska quarterback Tommy Frazier came out, 1995 Heisman winner, and said they should just fire the whole defensive staff. And to that, Bo Pelini did not like that. He Went said, since off. I came back, I'm embra- I've embraced former players. If he feels like that, then so be it. We don't need him anymore. What a shame. They no, did. he went off. There is a recording that came out today, yeah. but it's from two years ago yeah. oh, it's of not, him that's going off one? on okay. his fans. That was the old one. Yeah, though. but they brought it out today because of oh, all of that's this. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, look, I saw the game. watched part of it. Me too. It was and awful. UCLA uh, really was being taken to the woodshed there. All of a sudden, the first it half, turned yeah. around completely. And they just you know gave it up. So give you UCLA some credit, but uh, they gone through a tough situation where that player was killed too the week before. So what an easy time. Yes. All right, Tom. There's a new rule in college football. Both you and I got caught off guard by this rule watching TV over the weekend, and I'm still surprised because there was a play involving a Florida player in the game in Arizona in 2006 national championship game where this happened to. This rule would have been in, would have been intact. Who knows what might have happened because there's apparently a penalty that goes with it. So what? You, what is that rule? Well, JJ said that uh, it actually the first time he saw it was in the opening Thursday night game, South Carolina North Carolina. Right. I missed it in that game, I guess. Uh, a Texas A&M player <clears throat> had tackled an <clears throat> Alabama player for a loss. It had Alabama had I believe they had went for it on fourth down. It was either third down and they didn't make it, and we're going to have to punt, or it was fourth down. Texas A&M stops Alabama, going to get the ball back with momentum after they had just scored. Flag on the play. I was like, well, what, I'm holding or something probably. The defensive guy that made the tackle made the tackle after his helmet had come off. His helmet pops off. He continues on the play and makes a tackle. He got called for a 15-yard personal foul penalty for continuing after his headgear came off. So stupid. So you're telling me – that you want this kid in the heat of the battle, oh, my headgear come off, I got to stop playing football now. That's idiotic. I played linebacker all my career. And the wedge buster. Never would I have stopped if my helmet come off because I wouldn't have gave it any thought. All, I was th- all you think about when you're on defense is the ball must be stopped. Your helmet pops off, you don't even have time to – You afterwards you go, oh, my helmet, where is it? And you go look for it. For this to be a penalty is – just ludicrous. Well, first and they say, oh, it's safety. Some flaw in the system. These helmets coming off have been going on now for about 10 years. What has happened that the helmets suddenly fly off? It must be because of the padding in the helmet or something because it seems like that you'd be able to keep these things on with straps. I will say this. After this penalty uh, or whatever this new rule I haven't seen nearly as many helmets coming off as the last few years. So it is working. It's a stupid rule. 
I hate that one, especially where he's just not supposed to do anything. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Well, to I me. know you're supposed but to go off the sidelines. There's it's an enough, out of play. It really bothered me seeing these guys' helmets come off every single play. And, you know, teams like, especially the guys with the dreads, that was the worst. I feel like Clemson and South Carolina had a player lose their helmet every play. Now I don't see that nearly as much anymore. No. It's a good thing for the sport. All right, uh, shifting gears, Mac Brown does it again. Um, that was one of my few good picks of the weekend. I was 3-3 three and three and lucky to be that. Uh, Mac Brown lose to Ole Miss. I'm not surprised at that. That's not the point. They just look so bad again. And I, I can't – and I heard his press conference today, so I'm going to give it all I got every waking moment, da 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 And Mac has a great way of selling that, you know. We're still in there. We're going to keep fighting and so on and so forth. But I just think maybe now, as nice a guy as Mac Brown is, it's time for Mac to go. He's got all this talent, and the team loses, you know, to BYU, beats, get beaten by a good old Miss team. But, you know, let's face it, this is Texas. And uh, it's getting embarrassing. Mac Brown's buyout this year, $2.75 million. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of Texans who write that Yeah, check the game, the by the way, on Saturday was on the Longhorn Network. Yeah, we couldn't see it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, so Mac Brown, they look for news to come out of there because the heat is on, just like Bo Pelini is starting to feel it. These coaches are starting to feel it now a little bit. These high expectations. You notice how it is in college football now. They get the big bucks. Good high expectations when they don't meet them and when they don't play well, you know, in addition to not looking, not coached well, well, it falls to defeat the coaching staff. Speaking of coaching staff, is George O'Leary kind of secretly sneaking in there as a guy nobody ever talks about? The, the Knights go up to Happy Valley and, and really kind of, they didn't, that game never was really in question. They beat uh, Penn State, big win for the Knights at 3 and 0, and uh, there, what's that? What's that conference? AA All American or what is it called now? American, no. American Athletic. Athletic or whatever that AAU. thing is. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, <laughs> AAU. I mean, uh, I don't know about the conference, but I know that uh, I think it's UCF is very a impressive, big time man. program. Look at UCF and look at USF. The difference Jeez. in the programs. FAU, by the way, handled them on Saturday. Amazing. How far the Bulls have fallen, I buddy. know. Willie Tiger. I knew that was a bad hire, but I didn't know it was going to be this yeah, bad, dude. Yeah. Well, Skip Holtz must, you know, obviously things must not have been in great shape. but uh, They got a date with Miami coming up in two weeks, yeah, by the way. We'll, we'll see how that ready goes. ready for the whipping on that one. Yes. That's going to be ugly. Uh, also, let's get to back to Johnny Manziel for a second. Here we go. It, the experts love to chew up and spit out the college icons. I get the fact that they can't wait to look at his film and break him down and talk about his arm strength. And, yeah, there's, I'm sure there, there's never been a college player that, wasn't, that couldn't gotten better, didn't have flaws. But now a lot of people are talking about him being an NFL player. It's a long time away. Peter King wrote about it. And they quote guys as saying there's, that the scouts are scared of his mood swings and off-field questions. <laughs> Et cetera, et cetera. Mood swing. Uh, you know, and, and <laughs> some other guy says, well, his arm strength is not that good downfield. Somebody else says he's too uh, unpredictable. I'm going to tell you what, that was a Fran Tarkin performance of scrambling. I'll tell you what, what surprised me about Benzel. What, what surprised you guys about Benzel? Surprised me how fast he is. The guy can really scoot. Dude. He's elusive. It oh. surprised me how he's able to do it every single game, game in and game out. Uh, you'd think. Uh, a defense like Bama, a coach like Saban, would stop Manziel. I don't care who he is from scoring forty-two points. See, what that was amazing to me. He still scored forty-two yeah, points. What surprised me? Great defense. What surprised me so much was as he's running around back there and as he's scrambling and everything, he keeps his eyes up the field and can see receivers because you know that's when receivers break open is when the quarterback breaks out and he got a jail breaking. So defenders start trying to get towards the ball that he kept his <clears throat> eyes upfield so well and could just throw the football with pinpoint accuracy from a dead run with his eyes up the field Phenomenal while, he's, while throw. people were chasing him. I don't want to, he had 572 yards, I don't know, 62 yards. I don't know how many yards per throw pass. It had to be like 18 yards of throw or something. He had 462 yards passing, 98 yards rushing. Yeah, so figure out how many catches that was. So that tells you right there. So I, I'm really impressed. You know, I've criticized Manziel. I'm still not completely happy with his attitude. But I'm also liking him to Joe Namath, who was the same kind of spirit, you know, high-spirited guy. I'm hopeful. I, liked, uh, I like Austin's 
observation about the way he played, talking about how he, he showed respect on the field. He didn't, he didn't ham it up too much. Well, buddy, it also surprised me how – after all the hype of this game, game of the century and all that, the very first drive they get the ball, and you think he'd show a little bit of nerves, but no, he comes out in like a flawless first drive. He has like three runs for 10 yards apiece and then like four passes, and they score right off the bat. 14 nothing, boom, yeah. there they are, you know. Yeah, I, you're right, and, and I could do without the, uh, the, the towel around the neck and his, his visor. That's a little much. <laughs> But uh, hey, hey, Cam Newton does the towel around the yeah, head. Yeah, I know, but he didn't do it at Florida. So he didn't do a lot at Florida. Yeah, so he did. He did a lot. He might have done it at Florida. We just didn't see him on the sidelines. Though. Yeah. Uh, well, you didn't. Never saw him in the game. <laughs> exactly. Him, so uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on Manziel. Uh, his stock has gone up in my eyes. Uh, I'm rooting for the kid. I love the way he plays football. Um, all right, let's talk about the NFL. What was the biggest surprise of the weekend? The Giants getting blown out. The 49ers getting upset, uh, or the Bucks losing another game in a, a weird way. No. I think it's got to be the Niners, not for losing, but just getting absolutely manhandled Handle. and destroyed. That's not the biggest surprise to me. The biggest San surprise Diego. to me. No, not not at all. Big surprise to me. Buddy, the Buffalo Bills drive down and win a game at the buzzer. <laughs> yeah. Rookie quarterback, buddy. E.J. Manuel, yeah. a minute and a half, drives him down and wins the football Jimbo game. Jimbo Fisher tried to tell us about that, you know. He, he told did. Us, he kept telling us, yeah, he's a good player. He reads defenses. I'm thinking, wait a minute. He had some really bonehead passes. Did he? But He's a rookie. Yeah, but at the end of the day, for you to be able to make a drive like that, and it was a long drive. It was like 70-something uh, To win the yards, game, that's amazing, yeah. man. Fitzpatrick never did that. Yeah. And they paid him $60 million. Yeah. All right, the whole we got to go. We've got Mizell coming up, but uh, talking about a Gator legend who died. But by the way, they're talking now. There's more and more pressure mounting about the Redskins' nickname. You know, the Washington Post is writing that trolls about it. Right. Uh, Peter King, uh, several announcers are, said they were not going to call the Redskins. And I'm thinking, you know what? In much of the tradition it is maybe a name change would help. They could sure use it right now, like <laughs> the Devil Rays to the Rays. You know. Maybe they should change it to something else. Kirk Cousins help. getting calls to start, by the way. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it, it really, that's, that's, clearly uh, RG3 is not ready. Exactly. He's, he's he, not. Ran, he ran for one yard yesterday. Yeah, well, he's not a runner right now. So we'll take a break, come back. We'll talk about an a unbelievably legendary Gator football player who died, and we'll discuss with Hubert Mizell of TV20 who that guy was after this timeout on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The Source. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with her clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we, you know, we, we, we have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the, the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we, have, we obviously have a world-class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic-sized swimming pool. We have, the, uh, we have a fitness center that's, that's second to none. And we have uh, state-of-the-art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. The heart of the county. We're WOCA News Talk 1370. 
The Corkscrew Winery in downtown Ocala is having a grape stomp Saturday, September 21st from 5 to 7 p.m. The cost is only $25, and that includes the grape stomp experience, a glass of wine, and light finger food, plus you bottle and take home a finished wine. The Corkscrew Winery is located at 16 Southwest Broadway in historic downtown Ocala. Space is limited, and reservations are required, so call today, 352-402-0158. That's 352-402-0158. Hi, this is John Sotomayor, Executive Editor of Ocala Magazine, here to tell you that Ocala Magazine now has its very own radio show, and it's right here on WOCA The Source. Tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. And we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life. We'll be covering the latest stories that impact your world right here in Ocala. Be sure to tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. For Ocala Magazine Radio, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Hi, this is Joe, and I'm your host for the new show, Damage Control, every Tuesday morning at 10.30 a.m., brought to you by Damage Control Services. We're going to be discussing floods, fires, storm and tree damage, sinkholes, mold, and many other disasters that you need to know about, how to prevent and prepare for them, as well as what to do when it happens and what to expect after it happens. This is Damage Control, Tuesdays at 10.30, right here on The Source. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new Old Fashioned Bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. Uh, coming up, then Rick Sarris died, and uh, he's one of the great athletes ever to play at Florida, and guy who remembers him a little bit for his time and mine. But you remind yourself, will join us in just a moment. Meanwhile, we talked about guys losing their helmets, and we talked about the 2006 championship game in Austin. Austin came up with uh, the stat man came out with a name. Uh, Tom, you know who it was? Uh, Tell him. Brandon Spikes. No, close but no cigar. Who was Earl Everett. Oh, Earl, Earl Everett. Earl Everett. I Earl Everett. About. Yeah, lost his number seven. five. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah, I didn't Earl know Everett. That. There you go. So, all right, let's go down to our hotline and talk to the man who remembers this guy. Although neither one of us saw that much of him, I'm sure he probably was there in Jacksonville uh, when Florida played in the first Gator Bowl, first bowl game ever. And Rick Casares had a big day. And what a phenomenal athlete! You can make a case, Hubert Mizell of TV20, for this guy being in top, at least the top ten athletes to ever play at Florida, and maybe even the top. Top six or seven. Your thoughts about Rick Caceres, Hubert? He might be in the top one. He was uh, in an era when most running backs were 170 pounds. Rick Caceres was a muscular 225, and uh, he did indeed play in the first ever bowl game that the Gators uh, uh, participated in. Uh, uh, after the 52 season, they played Tulsa mm-hmm. in the Gator Bowl, and Caceres scored the first TD, uh, kicked both extra points, and they uh, upset the uh, Miners uh, 14 to 13. And uh, uh, and one of the most amazing things about Caceres, he was six feet two, and he he played basketball for mm-hmm. the Gators and led the SEC in rebounding. Mm-hmm. And I think he could have been terrific at anything he tried. He he went into the Army uh, right after uh, uh, playing for the Gators, and uh, he became the all-Army heavyweight boxing champion. Uh, he was a track star, great with the javelin. Uh, so whatever Rick Caceres tried, he could do. Phenomenal. You're right. A couple things about that. One is that he actually got into an automobile accident 
uh, involving, I think, perhaps uh, my intoxication with another woman who I think might have been married. And uh, he didn't finish his senior year because the judge sentenced him to join the Army. He was not drafted. He actually was forced yeah. to join okay. it. The late Augie Griner uh, roomed with Casares. He used to talk about how people would show up in long black cars on a Friday night of a weekend. And Rick says, you got to leave, Augie, and go with the way for the weekend. And Rick would have his uh, friends from Tampa up. He had a little bit of a curious um, association with some folks in Tampa. Used to own a club down there that became Mons Venus, uh, Mons Venus, which uh, I'm told is a, is a gentleman's club. I've never actually been in the place before, but nonetheless, it's you're in, right. It's, it's it's infamous, buddy. It's, yeah, uh, I know. I well wrote about known. it during the Super Bowl. They wrote about it. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Polly said today. And the article I read on, in the Tampa Bay Times that if they'd have known that's what it was going to become, they never would have sold it. But you're right about the basketball. Uh, Doug Dickey tells a story. It's it's in the book, actually, that's out now, Boys Mill, Florida, uh, about how uh, Casarius was played in the basketball game. And Dickey played with him in basketball and football. And there was some issue down in the Ole Miss locker room. He said Rick went downstairs in the Ole Miss locker room, and he got that straightened out. <laughs> he said it wasn't any problem well, after that. So. Well, Rick, Rick, he was so strong. He was only six two, but he, when he got his hands on the basketball, nobody took it away. He, he's just yeah. a, a phenomenal uh, physical specimen, and uh, I, I think his family did have uh, some uh, uh, some associations mm-hmm. with the, the the mob people in Tampa. And as a matter of fact, Rick's dad was killed by a. A gang assassin when Rick was only seven years old. Mm, yeah, and and in a foot in a basketball uniform, uh, he had. I mean, I've seen. I saw him in a basketball uniform. His had m- muscles that they didn't know he had. I mean, his muscles ripple like you know, Mister America, without having to work out. He was naturally gifted with an incredible body. He says you said he was the son of a barber and a waiter, and a grandson of a cigar maker from Spain, and Italy. Uh, and so uh, he was just a colorful guy. Uh, I know you've interviewed him before. I did years ago in Lake City at the Florida Hall of Fame um, meeting. And Rick was, let's just say, Riff wasn't, wasn't the swiftest interview, okay? But he was entertaining. And remember, he was the number one all-time rusher for Chicago Bears until, I guess, a guy named Walter Payton came along. Uh, and he's now still number three. So phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal player, uh, RIP to a guy who was 82 years old and uh, who had quite a history. Jack Carson, our old uh, friend who uh, passed away a few years ago, he was the sports editor of the Gainesville Sun, and one time he had a chance to uh, interview uh, George Hallis, who Papa Bear, who was the coach mm-hmm. of uh, those Chicago teams, and uh, Hallis told him a story about. Uh, he knew that Rick was a, a playboy, and he would come in at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And, and so Hallis sat him down, and he said, Rick, everybody knows that you're the number two running back in the NFL ahead, behind only Jim Brown. He said, I think you could be the number one back if you would dedicate yourself and, and not stay out late and, and not live that uh, playboy life. And uh, Caceres thought about it for about 30 seconds. He said, uh, Coach Hallis, I think after deep consideration, I'm happy being number two. <laughs> that sounds like something he would he would, uh, he would probably say. Uh, but he was a legendary athlete uh, from Jefferson High School, and they used to talk about him all the time. Uh, and uh, and everybody wanted to claim him. The Greeks wanted to claim him. One of my best friends was Greek, and the Spaniards wanted to claim him. And anyway, he was a great player, great athlete, and a guy that. Uh, the younger guys won't know much about, but the one that the old timers will never forget because he was a phenomenal athlete. So, Hubert born on the fourth of July, by the way. He and George Steinbrenner, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he, he's uh, he should he should not be forgotten so quickly. I agree with you on that. Just a little quick remembrance. Just a quick thought from you about this Gator football team. They're going to play a battered, beaten up Tennessee team who got hammered by Oregon. Is this team going to be able to wake up and have a chance to compete, or are they in trouble in game zone? Well, they better wake up because they got to win this game. They, they, their, their season has no chance if they don't handle Tennessee. Uh, the Vols got embarrassed by Oregon. Uh, I think they were down fifty-nine to nothing in yeah. the three quarters. And if you can't beat a, an SEC brother who gets uh, 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 whipped that badly by uh, another team in the country. Uh, you're you're in deep trouble. So the Gators have 
uh, they really got to win the next two or three games to get their uh, chances back on track before they play at LSU. All right, Hubert, I'll see you in the press box on Saturday. Hubert Mizell, who does commentaries for TV20 regular. What was the one on today, Hubert? I, I did the one on day, today about uh, paying college athletes, and mm. uh, my uh, my answer is a gigantic N-O. Mm. Never pay them. Well, how about that? We'll have to talk about that sometime. All right, Hubert, appreciate okay. your telephone call. Appreciate you being on my the show. My pleasure. Hubert Mizell, TV20. Former sports editor of the now we got to have him back. Huber on, buddy. Didn't words. He said now, N-O. I wanted that interview to go yeah, a lot longer. But we'll get it next time yes. around because uh, you and I will disagree on that. But uh, Hubert, Hubert, that's long- not the popular answer nowadays. About six, seven years ago, it was. Yeah, no. it's a. It's. I thought about it last night as long as we got a second here, and I love one thing Herb Street said over the weekend. I've been thinking about this whole situation. There's got to be a way to compromise, and this is one small step. He said, take the money from the jerseys that the player generates and put part of it in a fund they get after graduation. Now, that makes some sense because a player who generates revenue, the other thing I thought about was if there was a way to have a credit for an athlete, say, if you generated so many dollars, then the institution could give you that education for your family. So you could educate four of your children or whatever because you brought much glory and money to, to the, the university. Right. So there's got to be ways to, there's always a way to do this thing. You know, it's just the idea that some people think, well, they shouldn't pay them because they're amateurs. What do you think Olympic athletes do? They get paid a ton of money, you know? And it's really, it's all about the money, isn't it? So a, sub, a subject we'll have to talk about at a later time. But all right, we'll go ahead and take our break now. we got, coming up, we got... Um, Franz Beard, we'll catch up with him and see what he's got to say about Casares. We'll have Although, 60 seconds for Mayweather, too. Uh, I want to talk. Well, you want to do it right now? Yeah, we could do that. Go ahead. Let's talk about the fight. You watched it over the yes. weekend? Yes. How, uh, how much you pay for it, JJ? It's like 65, 70 bucks. Uh, it's, it's $10 cheaper if you get it in standard definition, which no one has no, a standard you can't definition watch TV this, anymore. Yeah, no. But it's better than packing yourself into a bar yeah. at one in the morning having to drive home, and you got to get there at like nine, so you're drinking and driving. It's yeah. just better. Good choice. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Mayweather controlled most of the fight. Most people had him winning about seven or eight more rounds than Canelo, the undefeated Mexican 23-year-old, except for C.J. Ross, <laughs> who is a female judge, who was famous for giving Timothy Bradley the win over uh, Manny Pacquiao a couple years ago, and that's that was Pacquiao's first loss in a long time. That's when he fell off the map. Everyone knows that he won that fight, but uh, she had a lapse in judgment when it came to her scorecard, and she did that again. 114-114 draw, so instead of a uh, unanimous decision, it was majority. Both draw? other judges had Mayweather winning by, you know, draw? six, seven How rounds. How could you go out with a draw in a fight like that? And her scorecard, you know, they have to publish it or whatever. You know, it's funny about how boxing scores. It's so adequate. Oh, man. It's so adequate. That's why it's hard to trust the sport. Yeah. Uh, but she had four out of the last five rounds for Canelo, which is insane because if you watch good? the fight, no. If you watch the fight at that point in the fight, Mayweather was controlling him. And it's funny that they gave him a draw because after the fight, Canelo, through a translator, says, I had no chance. I couldn't touch him all night. So if he couldn't touch him all night, explain to me how it was suddenly a draw, CJ. Um, well, so, Mayweather's you know, boxing, got, that's part of boxing. But here's the good thing about it. It was good for Mayweather because he needed the money. So. Yes. <laughs> Mayweather supposed to gross between 80 to $100 million from this fight, by the way. (laughs) Thanks for that update. Appreciate it. Now you can go to your tax man right right off your fight. Yeah, I could. Because you use it in your work now, see? All right, just coaching you up on it. Take a break. Come back. Franz Beer will finish up today. We'll talk about the late Rick Caceres, who died today at 82. By the way, here's a trivia question for you guys while we wait. What was the last team Rick Caceres played for? It's kind of historic. I'll tell you about that next right here on Buddy Sports Page. 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's 
with leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, this is Lisa Midget, owner of Kinetic Motion Fitness here in Ocala, Florida. A lot of you have experienced our great classes and personal small group training, but did you know we now offer dynamic workouts on DVD? These high quality, locally produced, effective DVD workouts can go where you go. Going on vacation? No problem. We can go with you. Friends and relatives out of town who are jealous that you get to come to KMF? No problem. We ship anywhere in the United States for free. Our great lineup of four DVDs includes Kinetic Achieve, Kinetic Couples, Kinetic Core, and Kinetic Campus. Four great workouts for the entire family on DVD. Sound interesting? Check them out on our website at kmfocala.com. While you're there, check out our class schedule and come see us. We're only five minutes from downtown across from the Skylark Plaza. Visit kmfocala.com and like us on Facebook. KMF will get you results at our studio or at home with one of our DVDs. Kinetic Motion Fitness. We're ready when you are. Visit kmfocala.com for more information. Hi, I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Hello all, Joe Martone here for Karaoke Time. You hear me each morning for the segment of Fun with Joe? Well, fun is what I do. So the next time you want to have a get-together, for just about any reason, give me a call. 470-0276 for Karaoke Time. That number is 470-0276. Everybody likes to sing, and with the words on the screen, it's just that much easier. Call Karaoke Time, 470-0276 for the next event, big or small. Karaoke Time can keep the fun in your business, too. Oh, God. Oh, what wrong? Oh, need wood for fire. Oh, I go get. Oh, I got wood for fire. Oh, what takes so long? Had to use restroom. Someone not refill toilet paper. Oh, my bad. You wash hands? Oh, of course. Oh, what caveman you take me for? You know, Dan, people who save money by switching to Mike Scott Plumbing sure are happy. Well, Brittany, how happy are they? Happier than a caveman with indoor plumbing. Yep. Get happy. Get Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. 237-2888. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. back to the Buddy Sports page. Wrap up today's show with Franz Beard uh, who is uh, going to weigh in on what's ahead for the Florida Gators and Franz, you remember Rick Caceres and what a great athlete he was. We talked a little bit about him with Hubert Mizell. See if you remember the last team he played with because it's significant. Do you remember? Uh, let's see. Was it the Tampa Bay Bucks? Close. Florida team, but that wasn't it. It was actually the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, the first Miami Dolphin team, by the way. He was a running back on that well, team. Well, the great story, great story about that I can tell you about Rick Casares is in 1952 he came back from the Korean War and played the entire season without going through training camp. Literally uh, got off the train, got off the train, uh, went to and, and went to play the first game. Uh, of the season in football, led the Gators to the Gator Bowl, won the Gator Bowl MVP, and then on Sunday got a team manager uh, from football to, with a basketball, and they went out to some concrete courts in Jacksonville while they waited on the basketball team to arrive by bus from Gainesville, 
and uh, without any ever having practiced with the basketball team, he started the first night, night and the second night of the Gator Bowl basketball tournament, which UF won, and he was the MVP of that tournament. Yeah, he played with Augie Griner in one of those events. By the way, he was uh, Augie was a freshman. He was the MVP of the Gator Bowl tournament, and. Uh, uh, also, Rick, state Golden Gloves champ at age fifteen. Yeah, that was one, one of the big issues they had about was was whether or not he's. It's a great story on the Tampa Bay Times site, by the way. Quick, one more quick note. I, I, I forget about this, but I remember as early on going to the games and watching warmups. And if you remember Florida Field back in the day, the north end zone had a Coca Cola sign at the top up of there where the scoreboard yes, is now. It did. And he would consistently kick extra points, not soccer style, over the Coca-Cola sign. Incredible. What a leg strength he had. He was a terrific athlete all the way around. Uh, you know, and, and we talked earlier in the hour about how what a terrific basketball player he was. And uh, he could have been anything he wanted to be. And he was uh, still as a number three uh, rusher on the Chicago Bears all-time list. So, uh, and, and this was during a time when a time when if you carried the ball twelve times a game, you got a lot of carries. Yeah, and the number one rusher in the game was Jim Brown, as Hubert Mizell pointed out. So, not bad company. Uh, we only got about a minute, real quick. Give us what uh, what's ahead for Florida playing a team that got beat up. Is is Tennessee dangerous because of the hammering they took from Oregon? Well, Tennessee is going to be dangerous just because they're Tennessee and it's an SEC game. But if the Gators come into this game focused, it's not going to be a ball game. This is a bad Tennessee football team. Florida is going to be able to burn those corners badly. They're going to be able to run the football on them. The defensive line is terrible. Best thing that, that Tennessee can try to do is use that big offensive line, try to shorten games, and stay close uh, by running the football. But if you stuff the run, then they've got issues. The quarterback's a freshman, and, and he's not that good, uh, unfortunately for Tennessee, uh, fortunately for Florida. But it's an SEC game, which means it's a test, means you got to answer the bell. And if Florida comes out with a lack of focus, it's a game they could lose. 